ultimate childhood dream. I spent almost nine months of this year as an over-the-road truck driver. Six months in the Freightliner Cascadia pulling the refrigerated trailer. Then nearly three months in a Kenworth T680 pulling the flatbed. I drove more than 90,000 miles. From New England to the Pacific Northwest. From San Diego to Central Florida. I retired this month. Partly because the dream has dark sides so dark they'd shame the black hole. Last week I watched Elon Musk unveil the Tesla Semi to see how he'd address some of those unsavory elements. We don't know what the production truck will achieve when it hits the road, but the Semi has a lot going for it. Nevertheless, the Semi seems most impressive to those who don't know what it's like to be a truck driver. First, let's clear up what this truck is for, as it was presented. This is not an over-the-road truck. This truck suits line haul, routes that run between the company's terminals, like from one regional Walmart distribution center to another. When Musk made the case for a 20% savings over a diesel truck, he based the numbers on a 100-mile trip, 50 miles out, 50 miles back. The Semi would be perfect for port work, which involves lots of waiting, idling, stop-and-go traffic, and local out-and-back trips. This first version of the Semi will not replace the dozens of thousands of trucks on huge regional or coast-to-coast -coast runs, clocking 2,000 to 5,000 miles per week. I only have space here to address a few issues, so we'll start with the central seating position. I don't see how that helps the trucker. I already get a commanding view of the road in a traditional truck because I sit six feet above traffic. What I need is a commanding view of my own truck, which the central seating position compromises. The worst blind spot in a tractor is next to the doors. In the Tesla Semi, I can't lean over to see if there's a Toyota Corolla camped out beside me. The central seating position hampers my commanding view when I need the view most, when I back up. For any backing maneuver, I watch both sides of the trailer in my mirrors to make sure I don't clobber anything, or I lean out of the truck to watch the trailer as I back. Being able to physically watch the trailer, not camera images on screens, can be the difference between making a clean backup or making an insurance claim. An 80,000-pound tractor trailer needs about 550 feet to come to a complete stop from 55 miles per hour, and I spent a surprising portion of every driving shift trying not to obliterate car drivers who weren't aware of that fact. Show me how much the semi can lop off that braking distance. The truck cabin photo must use during the presentation had a Qualcomm type unit, plus a traditional GPS, plus an iPad with a GPS display, plus another small display I couldn't identify. I've been in plenty of truck stops and walked by a ton of trucks, and only the most frightened novice or the most chronically indecisive driver would mount that much junk. Truckers don't sit there while filling up at a truck stop. Truckers clean all the windows, mirrors, and headlights, check the tires and axle seals, make sure every tractor and trailer light works, and look for damage. This walk around can't take longer than the actual fill up, and it must be done no matter what energy powers the truck.